It's time to hit social media for our cash tag segment. For that, we're bringing in Andy Swan. He's a co-founder of Likefolio.com, and we're taking a look at Costco ahead of earnings with Andy. Good morning. Hey, how's it going? It's going great, uh, Andy. So we've got this stock, um, Costco, coming out after the close. Really pretty choppy results recently on the retail space with Kroger underperforming today, but Target, uh, Dollar Tree blowing it out earlier this week. So wh uh, what are you guys seeing from like Folio on Costco? Yeah, you're right. It has been choppy in these types of names. And, you know, really Costco, no exception for us. Um, you know, so what like Folio does is we try to look at what we call purchase intent mentions. And that's people talking on social media about shopping at the store, about buying Costco brands like Kirkland products and things like that. And when we look at that over time, we, we see a nice correlation with the stock, but what's starting to concern us is just a, a small little drawdown you can see uh, at the end of that chart over the last uh, four to six months, just indicates that, uh, that maybe consumers are just less likely uh, to be shopping at Costco or maybe just pulling back on their retail purchases in general. And so with Costco having a, a big bounce uh, from the December lows to where it's at now, you know, it just looks a little bit like Costco stock may be a little bit ahead of itself. Um, definitely not any red flags on the company, but just that the, the growth that Wall Street expects uh, may not be there uh, this time around. Yeah, uh, Andy, and I saw in the Kroger report that they kind of blamed gas. Costco's a big part of getting foot traffic in their stores, uh, providing really inexpensive gas. Uh, but with this company, this, does the subscription model kind of create a barrier for, for Costco as opposed to the other companies because of that, that yearly fee that, uh, that uh, consumers pay? Yeah, they've got the yearly fee. Um, they still are doing an excellent job of delighting their customers. Uh, the, the private label brands that they have, the Kirkland brand, I uh, just got a note here uh, that I think in 2018, Kirkland brands sold more than Campbell's Soup, Kellogg's, and Hershey's combined. Uh, so that's an enormous company to have inside of your company. I think that it builds loyalty. Um, the membership angle builds loyalty. You know, you're just more likely to shop somewhere where you're a member and already paying to to uh, to be able to shop there. That's probably the last place that you're going to cut off of your uh, list when when the wallet gets a little tight. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of those generic brands that's actually worked well for Costco. Buffett, Warren Buffett actually came out uh, after um, Kraft Heinz uh, earnings the other day, and he said that Costco's Kirkland brand selling more than all Kraft Heinz brands combined. So, to your point. Yeah, it's a, it, that's a huge trend across all grocers, I think. Uh, you know, the, the move to private label has been uh, huge, especially uh, in condiments and some of the just consumer staples, I think. It's one of those trends that we're seeing at Like Folio time and time again is that brand loyalty among uh, those kind of staples is just dropping and dropping on a year-over-year -year basis. Got it. All right, for more on social media, let's bring in TD Ameritrade Network's own Jenny Horn. Good morning, Jenny. Good morning. You're bright and yellow today. I am. Yeah. So what do you <laughs> what do you see on social media as far as Costco, Costco goes? Because uh, Kirkland's got everything from wine to big bags of almonds. I mean, to everything. To appliance. I mean, they yeah. have like Costco has everything. It's yeah. kind of remarkable. But actually, Costco, from a trading perspective, on um, the cash tag today was super kind of burdened by Kroger's news. People seem to think that now with these low, lower numbers, Costco is kind of doomed today. But if you search just by Costco itself, you see really, really positive noise. Like People it, love Costco. People do, like Andy just mentioned, people love Kirkland. Mm -hmm. People love to talk about their positive experience at Costco. So from a brand perspective, they're doing all right. So people really love to talk about their positive experience at Costco. Their sampling is a huge thing people talk about on social media. You can get media. lunch there just guy walking around sampling in the store. Exactly, That's people awesome. love to talk about that. But yeah. our first tweet is from Leilani Pips who says, grocers probably take a hit on Kroger Plunger. Costco reports after the close today, Sprouts Farmers Market down 2.3% in sympathy. So Costco is kind of the last of the retailers to report this week. What are we really watching going into post-market today? Well, I thought um, Kroger's results were a little bit of an outlier because we've seen uh, positive results from other companies. Right, like uh, Target, in this Dollar Tree. Yeah, Target, Dollar Tree. Even Walmart's earnings were uh, really good. Uh, and 
people forget Costco's e-commerce segment is really growing really strongly and you know you can buy cars from there you can buy vacations from there so it's so becoming a one-stop thing but I think the subscriber base uh, and those uh, sub subscription fees will be the differentiator for this company but that's not to say that uh, we couldn't see uh, maybe some lower guidance because I think that's what hurt uh, Kroger also right all right, well, our next tweet is from Uberfax, who says, Costco purposely designs their stores without signs, so people are forced to wander throughout all aisles to find things. So I did some fact-checking. This is actually completely true. And I mean, if anyone's been to Costco, they know this to be true because you just really wander. So Andy, do you see this at all mentioned on social media today? No, you know, we don't see that. It kind of reminds me of the casino layouts. I think that those yeah. have the same type of concept behind them. And it sure sure seems to be effective for Costco. I know I wander around looking for things all the time and get hit by the samples and walk out. That's why the shopping carts are so big because you never know what you're gonna end up putting in there. Uh, you know, but for, for us, from a like folio perspective, um, we see a little softening at Costco. The one thing I will tell you to keep in mind is that Costco is one of those companies that reports their revenue numbers on a monthly basis. So there's only so much surprise that's gonna come from an earnings uh, event like this. And I do think Tom's right. It's really about guidance going forward. Um, so, you know, for Costco, we think maybe the stock's got a little ahead of itself, but uh, the data looks fairly solid from a consumer loyalty perspective. Yeah, as January totals comparable store sales increased 5.2%, so they do release those. But you're right, Andy, I can never get out of a casino when I'm in one because they don't label the exits very well. Similar to Costco. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same, hey, you're gonna walk out of both places broke. Yeah, that's yeah. True. true. You go in to Costco for one thing and then you come out. $500 with, later exactly. and you're like, what happened to me?